A short message, first of all, to those of you who are going to use this video as an enabler. I know you're out there and I know your intentions and there's no way I can stop you. I can tell you to stop this video right now and you probably won't listen to me and you'll watch on anyway. So instead, I'm going to tell you, you don't deserve what you're doing to yourself. You deserve to be happy and you deserve to live. Over the past three years, I have been living with an eating disorder. It is Tuesday the 15th of October and it has been a week since I chose recovery. I've been very anxious and I've been crying a lot and I've been quite sad but I know that this is the right decision and I know that I'm going to be gaining weight over the coming year and I know it's going to be addressed. So there you go, there's the reason. My hunger used to be insatiable. I used to eat all the time, I used to think about food all the time, I used to be hungry all the time. In school, I would eat my lunch at break time so that at lunch time I could nick food off my mates. Ask my best friend where her sandwich crusts went and she'll tell you they went in Sam's gob. I could never eat enough when I was a teenager. And it never worried me. I never worried about my size because I was too worried about my ears and the fact that I had chins whether I was bigger or smaller. So my body never came into it until three years ago. I can pinpoint the exact day that triggered this chain of events that led to my eating disorder. I was in a relationship. He broke up with me. Not once, but twice. The first time is the time I'm referring to. It didn't last 24 hours, we got back together. But when we were back together, I felt that he still didn't want to be with me. He wished he'd stayed broken up with me. So my brain told me that in order to make him love me, I should lose weight. Now, because I was sexually active with this person, I had already started to lose weight. So cutting down on food and being sexually active did make me lose weight quite rapidly. And I liked it and he did notice and to his credit, he did often point out that I didn't eat enough. I mean, he did still turn out to be an asshole, but not in that way. He knew that I wasn't eating enough and he told me that I wasn't eating enough regularly. And obviously the cutting down on food and losing weight and getting skinnier didn't work because we broke up again. And then I started to worry. I thought, okay, if I'm not sexually active anymore, then am I gonna start gaining weight again? Am I just going to lose all this progress that I've made? So from there it kind of spiralled. I'm not going to go into detail about what I did eat and slash what I didn't eat because I don't think that's a good idea and I don't want to give anyone any ideas if they are looking to feed their eating disorder through this video. That is not the goal at all. So I'm not going to go into detail about that but I continue to shrink my portions and over the next year I continued to lose weight and at one point I remember in work we had a birthday party for one of my colleagues and an ex-colleague who'd retired attended and she saw me and she said hi and she went wow you're really skinny now you're not anorexic are you and I just didn't know what to say I kind of just looked away and my friend just went of course she's not 
nothing more was mentioned about it, but that really sticks out in my mind. And at that point, I didn't think I was suffering from an eating disorder. I thought I had it all under control. I thought I knew what I was doing and I was going to stop when I wanted to and when I liked how I looked. And a little PSA, you are never going to like how you look 100% of the time. When I was a size 12, I didn't always like the way I looked. Now, I don't always like the way I look. I looked awful yesterday. I also remember completing a puzzle with my sister and she took a picture of me after we completed the puzzle. And I looked at it and I thought, wow, I am really slim. And at the time I felt really pleased. Part of me knew that it was wrong to be that excited about how skeletal my hands looked in that picture, but it was something I didn't want to let go of. Then in September last year, I began learning to drive. And it went through my head that once I'd passed, I wouldn't be walking to work anymore. And that frightened me. I thought, I'm gonna pile on the pounds. I'm gonna go straight back to where I was. And I don't want that. So shortly after that, I joined a gym with my sister and I would run on the treadmill for 45 minutes and then I would do 15 minutes on a bike. And I remember the first time I went on the treadmill, I stepped off and I almost collapsed. I was so dizzy, I couldn't see a meter in front of me, but I was with my sister and I couldn't collapse because then she'd know, even though she already knew, but it would confirm it. So I composed myself and we left. I do actually have a gym picture of me and my sister and looking at it now, I just can't believe my legs. I'm gonna admit that when the thigh gap was a thing on Tumblr, it was something that I wanted and I knew that I shouldn't want it because they're not healthy, especially if your body's not built for a thigh gap. In that picture, I have one and I looked at it and I thought, yes, I've accomplished it. So then I passed my driving test and I thought, right, I need to start exercising more. So I started taking the dog on longer walks and I'd walk to the salon if I needed my hair doing and I'd often go on my mum's exercise bike. And again, I shrank my portions. My family were making comments about how thin my legs were, how thin my face was, how small I looked, and it just made me angry. They wouldn't say it to my face, they'd say it to my sister or my mum, but I'd always have it reported back to me and I'd be like, it's none of their business, I'm fine, it's under control. But obviously it wasn't under control because here we are. So I reached my lowest weight probably last Christmas. I was depressed and miserable, but I wouldn't go on meds because I was scared they'd make me gain weight. So I just continued to starve myself. Then this year I made plans to travel to the Isle of Man to see my friend and for the past few months leading up to then, I got really bad. I used to go to her house to sleep over and we'd have snacks and snacks and snacks. We'd have bacon rasher crisps and salt vinegar sticks and biscuits and we'd eat the lot. No one left until it was gone. So you can imagine how nervous I was to go to her house for a whole weekend and possibly be pressured to snack. So I spent the past few months preparing myself. My anxiety got worse, my heart rate was sky high. I was dizzy all the time, my eyes were going yellow, which I have now learned is a sign of liver failure. I was just skipping meals and getting a daily headache because of it. I'd go to bed with a headache every night because I hadn't eaten enough and I hadn't drank enough. Then I went to the Isle of Man and I was actually not pressured into eating. So I was still eating really small portions and basically not enough. And on the last day, 
my friend and I went for a walk and she said to me, you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, but are you okay in terms of eating? And I just looked at the ground and I said, not really. And everything just came pouring out and I told her everything. Even though at that point I hadn't chosen recovery and I didn't feel ready to recover, I felt like steps had been taken. So I got home and the next day, my sister emailed me from work telling me that she really thought I should get therapy or counselling or something of the sort. And I went downstairs after reading this email and I just sat on the floor and cried. And my mum said, what's the matter? And I said, I really miss my friend. Having flown to the Isle of Man to see her, it really hit home that she doesn't live in the same country as me anymore. And I really miss her. And then I told her about the email and then something happened that scared the living crap out of me. My mum started crying. I don't think I'm ever gonna forget the look on her face when she told me how worried she was about me through her tears. I wanted her pain to stop and I wanted her to stop being sad and I knew how to accomplish that. So like that, I decided that I was going to recover. So the next day I called the doctors and made an appointment for two days later. I went to the doctors and to be honest, he didn't know much about eating disorders. So he scheduled me a blood test. He told me to get a heart trace and he's made me start a food diary. So that's where I'm at at the moment. I am getting my heart trace and my blood test both done this week. It would have been done by the time this video goes up. And then I'm being referred to a clinic. And I've got a lot of plans moving forward. I've started daily journaling because I want to maintain that element of control in my life that my eating disorder has provided. I've got a new meal plan for the fridge so that I can plan breakfast, lunch and dinner as opposed to just dinners. I've printed out photos to make a mood board so that I can look at the women I look up to on my wall and remember that their bodies are natural and beautiful and mine can be too if I work hard. I've looked at pictures of myself when I was at my biggest and when I was at my happiest and now. And the difference is insane. The largest I was was a larger size 12 and that's smaller than even the UK average size and I don't understand why I ever thought I needed to change that. I look at pictures like this and I can say that she looks stunning and she's beautiful and she didn't need to change herself. After my conversation with my mum, my friend did upload a picture of me from when I was at her house and I look awful. I'm not even at my lowest weight in this picture and I can't believe how unwell I look and I can't believe I didn't really notice it until I chose recovery. Since my doctor's appointment, when he pointed out that my heart rate is double what it should be, I've been so aware of my fast heart rate and it really scares me. And I just want it all to stop. I've got a bloody beard where my body is growing hair trying to keep me warm. I can't sleep comfortably because I'm resting on my ribs instead of fat that needs to be there. If you are struggling with disordered eating and you are struggling with the things that I'm suffering with, please just ask yourself why you're putting yourself through this. That is something I wrote in my journal a couple of days ago. Why did I do this to myself? I watch recovery videos from other YouTubers who I really look up to and I think they look better now, they look beautiful and that's what I'm striving for. I want to be like them. I want to beat this. So yeah, this isn't really the direction I saw my channel going in. I like to keep things upbeat and happy on my channel. That's the vibe I try to throw out. And I'm gonna continue to do so. 
like I said at the beginning of this video, you deserve life, you deserve to be happy, and you don't deserve what your eating disorder is doing to you. So that's all I had to say today. I just wanted to let you know what was going on before I do start gaining weight over the next few months and you wonder what's going on. I love you. I hope you're happy. And if you're not, I hope you get better. And I'll see you next time.